Hey there, Nick Drentakis here. In this video, we're going to go over a tool called Mailcatcher, which is a great way to preview emails in development and test environments. What I really like about this tool is there's no cloud component involved. Everything just runs on a local SMTP server that it sets up, and it's also compatible with Docker as well. This is amazing because it means that, you know, you don't have to worry about your dev emails being sent up to the cloud to some cloud servers that's going to, you know, allow you to see previews of your email. No, this tool does it all. It gives you a web UI that you can check out. And what's really cool about the Docker images here are, you know, they're both up to date to the latest version of Mailcatcher, and they are both both built for AMD64 and ARM64 CPU architectures. So if you've got an Intel CPU, an AMD C CPU, maybe you're using uh, a MacBook with an M1 or an M2 or a different device that's ARM64 compatible, then you are good to go here because the images are going to run for you. And this also makes it very easy to integrate in your, into your project because, you know, this is very tech stack agnostic. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're using Flask, Rails, Django, Node, or some other uh, web framework or whatever technology, you know, as long as you can send email over SMTP and can, can configure that, then you are good to go. And and we're going to look at an end to end example here of demoing Mailcatcher right now. And uh, actually, I just did a very big update to my Build a SAS Apple Fast course yesterday, and we are now using Mailcatcher in that course. So if you're looking for an end to end example, this repo, I'll leave a link to this one in the description. It's all set up and ready to go here. And that's what we're going to look at here in um, uh, some code. But this is the full version of the course of the code that we're going to look at. But that doesn't really matter for the sake of this video. So, you know, there is a contact form in the open source version, and that's what we're going to check out here. So I've got the application up and running here, you know, localhost 48,000 here. I'm going to go to the contact form. You know, this is your typical contact form. Like, let's say that um, you as an end user want to say like, okay, cool. Like, you know, my name is Nick Genetakis at gmail.com. You know, that's that's where my email is. And I'm just going to ask a question to uh, this sneak eye service here, right? This is the example application that we build in the course. And I'm going to send that email out. You know, this is a flash thing that's just letting me know like, hey, by the way, like, you know, you know we're doing a 301 or a 302 redirect here. And uh, normally a flash message would have been popped up here, but I actually have uh, Firefox here locked down super hard to not support basically saving anything just because I like to record videos without having to worry about blurring my uh, history or opening an incognito window. So basically there's no like persistence between requests here. So those flash messages get lost. Not related to mail catcher. Just wanted to give you a heads up and like, huh, surprise you don't have like, um, you know, some notification to say that the email was sent. It was, but check this out. If I go to port uh, localhost port 10,080 here, you know, just based on their documentation or, you know, their uh, homepage here, it says, you know, you can check out this web UI that's running on 1080 here. And, and that's what we see over here. And we can see the preview of the mail. If I click into it, we can see like, cool, here's like the text version of that mail. That's because, you know, in this version of the course here, uh, we only deal with sending text emails, not HTML, although the code supports sending both. But if you did have an HTML email, then it will load here in a tab. And we can also see in their little screenshot here that there is HTML. You can, you know, deal with images and stuff too. And there's other features that, uh, you know, not built into the course here, but you know, this thing does support. Like for example, if you need to deal with attachments and stuff, it's all here. So yeah, it is very good to go. Um, also what's really cool about this too, we, we can see, you know, it's really small here, but there's, it says mail catcher one because one mail was sent. But if I go here and just send, um, you know, some other email here, like a second one, we can see immediately that mail catcher says, no, there's two mails now. I didn't need to reload the page and nothing. Like it just uses web sockets and things get updated immediately here. And now we can see both emails. You know, we can see that it's from uh, nickjanitakis at gmail.com because, you know, this is a contact form where technically, you know, this is the email that uh, I would reply to as the business owner of the contact form. And, you know, it's sent to contact at local that host, whatever. That's just how I have the application configured. And we can see all the information here about source plain text, etc. Cool. And we can clear things out here too, if you want to. Yeah, since it's all running in Docker here, it all runs in memory. As soon as I do um, a control C or basically Docker compose stop, well, if like I stopped everything here, then all of those emails would have been cleared automatically. You know, you don't need to clear things out, uh, you know, you know, manually here if you didn't want to. And you can also search messages, etc. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So let's check out some of the integration here to make this work with Flask. And it's going to be very similar to other web frameworks as well. You know, again, we're just dealing with uh, sending SMTP uh, mails here. And actually, I think down here, it, you know, it gives you a couple little examples. Like for example, with Rails, you can just set your delivery method for, for mail to be SMTP. You just say, hey, localhost port 1025. You don't need to configure username or password. And that's it. It's basically like a one or two liner here with Rails, some PHP, Django, whatever. So let's take a look here at the Flask code just to see how this is configured. And if I go to my ENV file here, the way I've configured this application is I have some environment variables that need to be configured here. And 
We just say that the mail server is mail instead of localhost, but that's because I'm running things in Docker here. So if I open up my Docker compose file here, just on the side, we can see down near the bottom, I've got this mail service here. And just due to the way networking work with, works with Docker, you know, this service name here on the right needs to match up with the host name here on the left. So basically this Flask application will be able to connect to this mail catcher service running at the mail host here, the host name, because that's just how Docker works. And uh, yeah, we can see, you know, port 1025. We don't need to configure TLS here because that was in somewhere in their instructions here, like just dis disabling TLS. Uh, for Django, they had it there. Um, with Flask, I also have similar configurations as this, just different variable names potentially. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's all it took to configure it. Now, of course, you know, I've got Flask Mail, which is a Flask extension installed to actually do the actions of sending email over SMTP. But from, from the configuration point of view, you know, there's really not much else that you need to do. So if you're already sending SMTP based emails out to Gmail or like some other transactional email service, then yeah, you probably have your application set up to just be able to configure it like that. So again, here's like, you know, the specific Docker image. And then all this other stuff is, you know, kind of related to how I have my compose file set up completely unrelated to Mailcatcher. You know, I like to set a very short grace period so that I can control C things a little bit faster, especially in development. You know, we're not going to deal with any restarts here. You know, we're using Docker compose profiles. And uh, yeah, profiles are, I've actually done videos about that in the past if you want to go and check that one out here too. And if you're just looking for like, you know, complete get diffs of things that have changed to add Mailcatcher to this app, then there is a commit here somewhere that says like add Mailcatcher and we can see that, yep, we just added a new profile here for mail. Then we configure things to no longer send it to Gmail by default. Instead, we're going to be sending it over to Mailcatcher. And then, uh, yeah, if you want to just restrict the uh, 1080 web address here to more than just localhost or your whole local network, you can do that configuration here just by adjusting this one single environment variable. There is the compose service name. And uh, yeah, I just reconfigured the application here to read a different uh, configuration option here to basically just use the default mail sender instead of the mail username by default, because now uh, this application, the recipient, it can't just piggyback off the mail username because it used to be, you know, when you log into something like Gmail, the username would have been your Gmail account. So that could have been a reasonable, you know, default sender here for uh, who would receive the email. But in this case, yep, I just needed to introduce a new config value. Again, not related to Mailcatcher. But yeah, I am very, very happy with this tool. I've been using it for a little bit now, um, some real projects as well. And it has just been working very nicely. You know, you can just access this on demand. Don't need to worry about sending your emails out to the cloud and it all just works. And uh, yeah, with that said, let me know in the comments below if you're going to be using this tool or maybe you're already using it already. Maybe you use like an alternative tool. You know, these are all interesting questions. I did run to, into another tool that was very similar called MailHog. And um, I don't know, it didn't seem to be as updated as Mailcatcher and it didn't have Docker images that supported both CPU architectures with but for something like this, like to me, it's really important. Like, you know, I'm not using an M1 or an M2 right now, but a lot of people who take my course and a lot of folks or developers in general are using those devices. And, you know, as Apple continues to improve on their uh, M lines, then that's just going to become more and more popular. You definitely want to try to pick Docker images that support both architectures seamlessly. And it's also quite small. So even though Mailcatcher itself, uh, we didn't look at this, but, you know, it is open source here on GitHub. Um, you know, lots of stars here. It is written in Ruby um, here, but that's not important if you're running things in Docker in the sense that like, you're not gonna have to install Ruby, you just run the application and it's, you know, very small. It uses what, like 40 megs of disk space here. And if I run something like a Docker stats over here, we can see that uh, it uses very little memory when it's just up and running here. We can see that the mail service is using 32 megs of memory, uh, which is much less than basically everything here. I know Postgres and Redis are quite a bit smaller, but like, you know, the application itself, we're talking 250 megs, 100 megs here, that's 350 megs. Uh, yeah, Webpack Watch or whatever. So it's using like 10% of this whole Flask app's memory usage, which is great. And we can see if I scroll up here, actually, let me control C this one and I will just up this again, then we can see it. Surprised I didn't see it there, but okay. There it is. So let me scroll up a little bit. We can see that uh, Mailcatcher was started. So as they release new versions, if they come up, then I will be updating this application to use that if needed. But for now, this version has been super stable. And with that said, I think that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.